Joining us now to weigh in on all of this and what's happening on Capitol Hill is Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, a Democratic senator obviously from New York. We're so glad to have you back on set. But we, we have to ask you about what's happening with the attorney general now appointing the special counsel and the fact that the White House is acknowledging, yeah, these classified documents were found. Well, look, Do you believe that he's violated the federal law here? It's much too early to tell. There's a special prosecutor in each situation. I think President Biden has handled this correctly. He's fully cooperated uh, with the prosecutors. When the documents were found, he notified archives. It's a total contrast to President Trump, um, who stole, stonewalled for a whole year. But the pro point is we now have special prosecutors on for both of these situations, very serious people. We should let it play out. We don't have to push them in any direction or try to influence them. That's all I'm going to say. Let the special prosecutors do their job. Do you support the fact that a special counsel is overseeing this matter now? Yes, yeah. I do. And in fact, you know, uh, I was this when when they first uh, the FBI went to Mar-a-Lago and they said, well, what are you going to say about this? Mm -hmm. I said, it's premature to comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've said it here. So I've been consistent about it in both cases. You have prosecutors, special prosecutors. I support both of them. Mm -hmm. Let them do their job. I think that's all that should be said. The politician shouldn't be buzzing around. Just to be, sh to, to be sure about what you said, you believe that the Biden folks are being transparent about this? You think that they're being above? I think the Biden folks, as I said, cooperated with the prosecutorial authorities from day one, and Donald Trump didn't. This is our reporting. According to one justice official, said that the White House public statements earlier this week offered a, an incomplete narrative about the classified documents from Biden's time as vice president, reinforced the need for a special counsel. The misleading statements created the impression that Biden's team had something to hide. That doesn't sound that much different than the there's former now, president. Don, there's now a special prosecutor. Let's see what they have to say. We can have all this speculation and comment. Let's see what they have to say, and let's focus on doing things that help the American people. But Senator, I have to, I have to get into, have to say this. Uh, you, you seem much more measured about this than with the Trump documents, because you call for transparency with the Trump documents. You wanted lawmakers to have access to the documents seized from the former president, uh, his residence in Florida, which it seems like you. The bottom line is, I said that night, it's premature to comment on what should be done, for and president I stick Trump by that. Mean. Yes, for President Trump. That's exactly so right. you think that That's your statements are consistent for I both? I sure do. For both. You bet. Okay. So, you said the president has fully cooperated, and there's no indication that he and the White House have not. But there is a real question about transparency and what the American people well, deserve. Let me is, just let me let me. Prosecutors let me will just, get to the bottom uh, of this, and let's let them do it for I, God's I, sake. I, I, I know you, you all want to buzz around you. and all of that, but. Let me let me buzz for a minute. Okay, let me buzz. Let me buzz, buzz, buzz for buzz one away. minute, and I promise we'll get out of something just, else. But it's not just it's not just us buzzing around. You are the, the Democratic head of the Senate. This is a really important so, issue. It's not just buzzing around. It's, this, no, this but is we have. Stuff. And if there were no special prosecutor, there would be. You know, you might have a different thing to say, but there is. And now we have the law enforcement people who have the power to get all the facts out, doing it. I support both. I think we should have a special prosecutor on each. I don't mind your asking these questions, but my view is I'm not going to say anything. So, Let the special prosecutors do their job. The question I was going to ask is about the fact that when, when this did come out, after CBS's news is reporting and the White House came out and acknowledged it, um, they only addressed the documents found on November 2nd. But they knew at the time about the documents found on December 20th. And that's what begs the question of full transparency. And it's not just us. The Washington Post editorial board, no, you know, I'm this morning says the same thing, you. that if the yeah. president and this White House answered more questions directly, like that exact timeline, uh, that would, quote, promote trust and preempt this criticism. Would you like to see the White House do that today? I leave everything up to the special prosecutors. The, their obligation legally was to report things to the archives the minute they discovered them. Unlike Trump, they did. Can we talk about what's happening on Capitol Hill uh, as well? Uh, well, it is important to get your perspective on that. So thank you um, for, for providing that. What happened on Capitol Hill last week with Speaker McCarthy and the fight and the 15 ballots from to become Speaker and the concessions he made to the hardliners? They have said very clearly they do not want to just pass a clean spending bill. They want there to be cuts attached to that. How are you going to handle that in the Senate? Well, look, we always try to work with the Republicans in a bipartisan way. We had the most successful session Senate in decades in the last year. 
and six of the big seven bills were done bipartisan. So I would hope that House Republicans under Speaker McCarthy would reach out to us, we'll reach out to them. I intend to sit down with Republican leaders on the, in the Senate and the House and try and get things done that can help the American people. But this past week has been very discouraging. What did they do? Let's look at each of the things they did. None of them helped the American people. The first thing they did is protect multimillionaires and billionaires from being audited. It's been a long thrust of some of these MAGA Republicans that these people should get away with all the loopholes they use. And so finally, we were able to say, let's put some, the IRS is short of people because Donald Trump cut the people, the Tea Party cut the people. In fact, under Donald Trump- A lot of people Trump, are retiring from and, the IRS. And yes, and you need to put in new people. But listen to this, under Trump, you were more likely to be audited if you made, this is the reports, $40,000 a year than if you made $4 million a year. They said the EITC comes in. The Republicans come in and do that. Then they put in a budget that would require us to cut so many things. Their 10-year budget would cut Medicare and Social Security. Wow. Then they put in some things on um, abortion that would allow doctors to be prosecuted, skin criminalization in certain instances. And the final thing they did is launch a whole lot of co committees to investigate. You know what the American people want us to do? They want us to do things to make their lives better. They don't want just Congress to investigate, investigate. One final point. So there are a whole bunch of Republicans who are not MAGA. My hope is, and I believe this, that after a little while, they will see that following this extreme fringe is like following Thelma and Louise over the cliff. Well, and that they will come and start dealing with us in a serious way. We'll have disagreements, but in previous Congresses, we were able to come together and get things done. If the Republican Party rejects these MAGA extremists after a while, the mainstream Republicans, we can get a lot done, and that's my hope. But does this not make you regret not raising the debt ceiling before Republicans yeah. got the majority in no, the House? No, because it should be done in a bipartisan way. It always but, has been. But let's, take, let's take the debt ceiling to let the uh, default occur would hurt average Americans dramatically. If you are worried about inflation, and by the way, we've cut the deficit in the IRA, we reduced the deficit. If you're worried about inflation, default would be huge. So it always has been done in a bipartisan way. Three times when Donald Trump was president, twice when the Republicans had the House and Senate, we cooperated with the Republicans and raised it because, after all, these are debts we've already incurred. You're just paying the bill. Right. We did, and then under President Biden, we worked out an agreement, bipartisan, where the Republicans didn't have to vote for it, but they allowed 50 votes to pass it, uh, to pass it, and we got it done. That's what we should do again, get it done in a bipartisan way. They rejected that in December, but I think as we get closer and closer, uh, the real d d the day we have to do this or the month we have to do this looks three, four, five, six months off, that they will come to reality and again do the same thing we did the last four times.